When I walked into my first therapy session 10 years ago, I told Rose, the therapist, fix me and make me straight. Fix me, I demanded. My head and my heart were in turmoil. Fix me! I was tired of living a double life. I was, I was tired of wearing masks. Rose didn't say anything. She looked at me, smiled gently, and over the course of the next year, she led me and other broken individuals through a journey of self-discovery and self-love. When I stopped going for my sessions because I was coming back to Kenya, Rose told me not to lose my voice. I didn't have much of a voice when I was growing up. Convention, tradition, and fear kept me silent. I'd been made to believe that if I spoke back to my elders, I was being disobedient and I wanted to be a good kid. I didn't speak up because probably I was a middle child, you know, the one lost in between siblings. <laughs> I called myself the hand-me-down kid. <laughs> when I was in school, I was one of the top students in history and English for four years right through high school. But it was my maths and physics that my dad took notice of. <laughs> I didn't speak much then because the things that I was good at were not affirmed. So I kept quiet. I didn't speak much because of the bruises that came from the breakup of my parents' marriage. Let me tell you a story. My brother and I used to have two lunches three times a week. We would carry lunch from home, get to school, and give it out to our friends, which made us very popular. <laughs> the other lunch came along with my mom. This was back in the 80s. And this was our little secret. It was our way of seeing my mom in the middle of the week. I don't think my dad knew. He probably knows now. Uh, <laughs> But life handed my brothers and I a lemon, and we made lemonade and lemonade sandwiches. We accepted and moved on, and moved on like every good Kenyan, and dealt with our new family situation. In spite of this, we were accepted, got new relatives, and loved unconditionally. But also, it was at this time I started muffling my heart. Why do you ask? Because I realized, I began realizing that I love differently. It was scary and not exciting at all. So I, had, so I hardened my heart. I hid what I felt and buried it. I learned Kenya's third national language very well. And that is the language of silence. Many years on, when I got used to doing the things that were me and embracing myself, I started finding my voice, and I got to start liking myself. You know, I started embracing the things that made Kevo, Kevo. I wasn't such a bad guy. You know, I started changing, I started changing careers and the resignations that came, and people didn't understand me and all that, you know. I figured, why are you leaving a good, stable job? You've got a pension. Then I didn't even know what a pension was. <laughs> so I moved on. I got to start embracing me and liking me and, 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 and just living. I appreciated my good, my good side and my bad side. I appreciated travel, my love for shoes, different hair, reading, writing. And all those things that I had kept hidden away from me for so long. I got to embrace people. I love people. I love the diversity that they bring. And I also got to enjoy solitude. A solitude that would make me recharge myself. Along the way, I got to discover, I got to discover I'm quite intelligent. <laughs> Our beloved 8 minus 4 minus 4 left me intellectually with nothing. You can laugh. <laughs> but 
when I started embracing these things and doing the things I, I used to do, I got a knock. I got diagnosed with cancer. This guy, who was seen running around Kile with lycra, with night calves, matkoembes, you know, gets a knock. Speed bumps, as my friend one boy told me. I'm not out of the woods yet. And nor has it been as hard as people would like it to be. I have been given a new voice. I have been given a new opportunity. I got to discover that I have the mental strength that I didn't have before. This strength saw me through six months of chemotherapy, a stem cell, stem cell transplant, two weeks in isolation in India, and I want to thank my stepmom for seeing me through those weeks. You're my pal. Thank you. And then coming back to Kenya, wearing a mask and going through that recovery process, and you go to the shop, people stare at you. Because I had a mask and I was bold. I kept on telling them, it's not me I have the problem, it's you guys who can infect me. <laughs> <laughs> not having it, you know. So it was that. I got through that period and I got to learn. Being diagnosed with multiple myeloma has given me a new voice. And I will share my journey with all who want to hear. I'm the one in the driver's seat. I'm the one taking on the twists and the turns. It's not your over. During the course of last year, I have experienced kindness and love in a way that is impossible to imagine. My current therapist, I have a thing with therapist. <laughs> <laughs> my current therapist made me embrace one of the hardest lessons that I encountered, being open to kindness. And she told me, Kevin, receive kindness. And I received a lot of love and kindness. And I want to give back that love and kindness to the, to the people who gave it to me and the people whom I haven't met. And that is what I want to do. But I've been given a new voice. I've been given new eyes. I've been given a new opportunity. I'd like to be a lot more authentic in who I am in how I live. I came out to life, and life came out to me. There are no more duplicate lunchboxes. There are no more closets. There are no more silence that stifle, but silences that speak. I'm not scared of my voice anymore. And I want to appreciate life and thank life for giving me a voice. And I hope you too find your voice. You might meet someone you really like. Namaste. Thank you.